The company, Frank Moen AS, with the trade name Framo, is located in Bergen, a city in the west coast of Norway with long traditions in shipping and maritime business. Framo is today the leading supplier of submerged cargo pumping systems to the world tanker market. In year 2000, more than 1,400 cargo tankers equipped with Framal cargo pumps are daily crossing the seven seas and safely and efficiently carry and handle all types of liquefied cargoes. In this video, we will highlight correct operation of Framal cargo pumping systems during loading, discharging, stripping and tank cleaning. The Framo system can also incorporate heating, cooling and circulation of the cargo, all up to the owner's requirement. Sequence number one, loading the cargo tanks. Correct operation of pumps and valves is essential to avoid pressure shocks in the cargo pipeline system during loading. Pressure shocks may cause severe damage to pipelines, hoses, loading arms and cargo pumps. To avoid pressure shocks, start the loading slowly and don't open or close the cargo valve in the system too quickly, especially where long pipelines and high flow rates are involved. Framo recommend installing a separate cargo drop line to obtain a satisfactory loading rate and to make it possible to bypass the cargo pump during loading. This is a recommended cargo pipe layout in the Framal system. If bypassing is not possible due to valve arrangement, use the following procedures to avoid pressure peaks in the cargo piping during loading. Keep manifold valve closed until the cargo reaches the manifold. Open the manifold valve partly to fill cargo line on deck. Open the cargo drop line valve and pump discharge valve slowly until you reach maximum capacity. Remember maximum loading pressure is 8 bar, measured at the top of the pump. Continue to load through the drop line and the cargo pump. If the ship is not equipped with a drop line, follow the same procedure except for operation of the drop line valve. Most ships today have an integrated computer system which takes care of control and monitoring of all activities within the cargo tank section, such as pump capacity control, valve control, temperature and ullage control. If the loading has been stopped and the cargo valves are closed, it's important to restart the loading by following the same procedure as described earlier. Finally, some small differences in the loading procedure may apply for a chemical carrier, a product carrier, oboe and crude tanker. But the main rule is the same. All valves which control the liquid flow should be opened slowly. The time taken for the power operated valve to move from open to shut and from shut to open must be checked regularly at their normal operating temperatures. Sequence number two, discharging of parcel cargoes. Start the hydraulic power pack and increase the hydraulic system pressure. If the hydraulic oil temperature is below 20 degrees centigrade, circulate the oil through the heating valve at maximum 100 bar prior to raising the hydraulic system pressure to approximately 150 bar. Start the cargo pump slowly and let it run with hydraulic pressure 40 to 50 bar for approximately 1 to 2 minutes with closed cargo pump valve. Raise the pump's discharge pressure above manifold pressure to avoid backflow over pumping and then open the cargo pump discharge valve. Increase the hydraulic motor pressure until required discharge pressure or capacity is achieved. If required, increase the hydraulic system pressure. 
follow the same procedure for the next parcel. Ensure that enough hydraulic power is available. If not, the hydraulic pressure will drop and the capacity head will be reduced. The hydraulic system pressure must be slightly above the highest consumer pressure. Discharging of homogeneous cargoes, parallel pumping. Running centrifugal pumps in parallel is, for example, when discharging the same type of cargo with a number of cargo pumps through a common shoreline. With farm or cargo pumps, this is easy, as the farm or system gives the operator maximum flexibility and stepless speed and capacity control of each individual cargo pump. Nevertheless, in some cases, we've seen that small misunderstandings in the important relationship between the pump speed, number of pumps running, ullage and number of size of shorelines may delay the discharge drastically. For optimal understanding, from or training courses in operation and maintenance are arranged worldwide, all year round, by the professional from or training team. And there's no doubt that professional training is a good investment for the ship, the ship's crew and the ship owner. The capacity of all centrifugal pumps varies very much with the head or the pump's back pressure. If the head is very low, for example when pumping just over the rail, the capacity is very large. But if the head is very high and goes to maximum, the pump capacity goes to zero. In order to have a successful discharge of homogeneous cargo, try to avoid too many bends and T-pieces and never use valves and pipe diameters that are too small. Start the cargo pump using the same procedure as for parcel cargoes. Always start the cargo pumps with the discharge valve closed. Raise the cargo pump pressure above the shoreline pressure before opening the cargo valve to avoid backflow over pumping. The hydraulic system pressure should be maximum 15 bar above the highest consumer pressure cargo pump in order to minimize energy consumption, maintenance and wear and tear. Cargo pump capacity should be controlled by the pump speed and not by throttling the cargo discharge valve or any other valve in the cargo piping system. This can be achieved easily by keeping all cargo controllers in maximum position and regulating the main hydraulic system pressure until required discharge rate is achieved. If necessary, each cargo pump must be balanced individually by decreasing or increasing cargo pump hydraulic pressure. Generally, we recommend to run as many pumps in parallel as practical at a reduced hydraulic pressure, rather than just a few pumps at maximum hydraulic pressure. Remember, two pumps at 100% capacity give the same discharge rate as four pumps at 50% capacity. The advantage is reduced hydraulic system pressure, reduced speed and sound level, and increased lifetime. However, in some cases, for example when discharging cargo with low specific gravity and very long shorelines, we may have to run the cargo pump with full speed to meet the discharge pressure at the rail. Reduce the cargo pump hydraulic pressure to approximately 100 bar at the end of discharging or when the pump starts to lose suction, indicated by vibration and hydraulic pressure pulsation. This is to avoid hunting and dry running of the cargo pump. Sequence number three, stripping. At the end of the discharging, when the cargo tank is nearly empty, we're in the stripping condition. To obtain a best possible stripping result with a minimum wear and tear on the pump, we recommend the following procedure. 
Empty the cargo tank at reduced cargo pump capacity. The pump capacity, in other words the hydraulic pressure, has to be adjusted according to what type of cargo you're pumping, the cargo specific gravity and viscosity. When the cargo tank is empty, close the cargo valve and stop the pump. The best stripping result is obtained with lowest possible back pressure. Purge and empty the cargo deck line. On this ship, the stripping valve for the cargo pump is remotely operated for easier operation. Start the cargo pump locally and increase the pressure to approximately 80 to 100 bar. Open the valve on the stripping line. Regulate the air inert gas pressure with the inlet valve and strip the remaining cargo into the deck line until the cargo tank and cargo pump is empty. Close the stripping valve, stop the purging and stop the cargo pump. Repeat the stripping sequence if necessary. To sum it all up, we will highlight the four main steps schematically. Step 1. End of the discharging. The cargo pump is running at reduced speed. Cargo valve and manifold valve are open until the cargo tank is empty. Step 2. Purging of the cargo deck line. When the cargo tank is empty, close the cargo valve and stop the pump. Empty the cargo deck line by purging with inert gas. Close the manifold valve. Step 3. Relieving the pressure in the cargo deck line. Open the small stripping valves on cargo pump deck line to minimise back pressure in the line. Step 4. Stripping. Start the cargo pump locally and increase the pressure to approximately 80 to 100 bar. Connect the air inert gas supply to the cargo pipe and strip out the cargo through the small stripping pipe. Purge until the cargo tank and pipe stack is empty. Close the stripping valve and stop the pump. By following this procedure, you will achieve an excellent stripping result. And remember, when the discharge and stripping operation are completed, purge the cargo's pump cofferdam. Sequence number four, tank cleaning. To keep a dry tank top and still avoid dry running during tank cleaning, the tank cleaning machine's capacity, flow into tank, and the cargo pump's capacity, flow out of tank, must be equal. Reduce the cargo pump hydraulic pressure until the capacities are balanced. Before tank cleaning is finished, Close the pump's discharge valve and open the stripping valve to allow an increase in water level. Run the pump at approximately 110 bar against the closed cargo pump discharge valve for 1 to 2 minutes to clean the cargo pump. Remember to flush the pump and tank with fresh water if seawater has been used for tank cleaning. By following these instructions, you will achieve an energy efficient discharge, no pressure shocks during loading, and minimal wear and tear on the cargo pumps during stripping and tank cleaning. In other words, lower operation and maintenance costs for the ships, as well as for the owners. <laughs>